and I was like thinking about Cryptic Minds Batman VIP. It's like wow, whoa, boom, 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 and I was like, "That's sick." But what if it was like whoa, 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 instead of boom, boom, boom? <laughs> and now we're here. <laughs> Welcome to the Mr. Bill Podcast. I'm Anand Harsh, editor in chief of the Uns.com, Bill's manager and teetotaler. Big changes are coming to the podcast. We're going to be announcing those soon. Get ready, subscribers. We'll be streamlining things in an effort to make shit easier for you. Stay tuned for all the information coming down the pike. And thank you for continuing to support the show. Today's guest is a sweet baby angel and one of the best producers in the entire bass scene. Why don't I introduce all of our guests this way? Because they're not all DMVU. Matthew Philpot jones is responsible for producing some of the most iconic tunes in the bass world, and he's got an incredibly beautiful project, Ghost Creek, with his best bud, Nate, that's a funnel for his pretty down-tempo and hip-hop beats. He's also a very interesting dude, name drop for his cute cat, and one of the sharpest dressers I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. On October 29th, Bill will be at Nightmare Festival playing a Kill Bill set, then he's off to Freaky Deaky in Houston for a back-to-back with Freddie Todd, then he's off to LA for Pandemonium Halloween on the 31st for a another Kill Bill set. On November 19th, he's in Austin for Beyond Existence, and November 20th, he's at Otherworld in Ohio for the only Mr. Bill Gates set of the year and a bonus IDM set. Tickets at Linktree slash Mr. Bill's Tunes. Finally, head over to MrBillsTunes.com to sign up to become a hardcore Abletoneer. This is how you become better at making electronic music, period. That's all for me. Enjoy Bill's chat with DMVU. Hey, you're listening to the Mr. Bill Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the Mr. Bill Podcast. Hey, you are listening to the Mr. Bill Podcast. Hey, you're 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 listening to the Mr. Bill Podcast. cool well thanks for thanks for doing this man thanks for taking the time appreciate yeah, it yeah of course i'm glad this finally worked i've wanted to do this for a while and I'm, yeah i know i think it's cool that i jammed it in a period where i only had one day off so it's like even you know it's like <laughs> we're like i got a fire under me now damn yeah i know we tried to do this once in um montreal and yeah you ended up being incredibly sick or something Oh man, yeah. So Montreal was crazy because I was I was staying in an Airbnb with Push Loop and Zeke Beats, and I played Valhalla, and then went to this really famous deli. I forget what it's called, and it was really good, but it gave me food poisoning. Starts with an and, S, uh, doesn't it? Yeah, oh God, yeah, it does. And it's like, I bet John would know. It was like the line around the building Sh- for this Schwartz? deli took like is forty five it- minutes. Is it Schwartz or something? It might. It is Schwartz. It is Schwartz Deli. That's okay. exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've totally been, or I've heard about it. I think I don't think I've. Well, been. and this is the thing. I ate three different things that day, so it's hard to say what uh, actually poisoned me. But that fucking pastrami was so goddamn good. So, do you think it was Schwartz that fucked you up? I don't know. It's hard to say, and I don't even know if like I ate the most like disgustingly large pastrami sandwich, like. I don't want to say it was Schwartz, you know, off the record here. You know, I really like them. But, yeah, it was – I don't know. I ate it, and then I started rumbling, and then it was game over. Damn, dude. Crazy. Yeah, well, it's cool to eventually do this, and I'm stoked to stoked to have you on, man. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you for having me, man. <clears throat> yeah. Um, how's, how's shit been? Like, how's, how was your quarantine slash how's it been getting back into shows? Um – Easier, simultaneously easier and more difficult than I thought. I I kind of feel guilty for this, but like I thrived during quarantine. I got just lucky enough to have enough money saved to pay my taxes, and then I got put on unemployment. And I love being alone at my house. Like, that's what I live for. So I had a fucking blast. I played video games and wrote, like, more music than I ever have. And I was absolutely loving it. And I know the world was crumbling around me, but I feel very grateful that... I had, like, a year to just do shit, and I almost wrote an entire album, and I feel like had I been on tour, like, that probably never would have happened. So, that was nice, but it's also been difficult getting back to, 
like trying to balance touring and coming back from not doing anything for a year. Like even now, little things. I'll play one show and be tired for like three days. Like a few years ago, me and Yeti did 15 shows in a row and I was fine. So I've gotten <laughs> soft. I've like really softened up. Do you think there's like a certain type of fitness that comes with touring? Yeah. No, I'm really good at um, walking long distances with a heavy backpack, sleeping, sitting up, um, functioning extremely dehydrated. You know, these aren't necessarily healthy things, but I've learned to, you know, like, you know, I can really like live off coffee and like charcuterie boards. It's the whole thing is it's like it's. It's kind of like a learned technique, you know? It's it's like square breathing. It's just once you get it down, you can do it really well. Wait, what is square breathing? Oh, that thing where, like, you breathe through your nose and out of your mouth, like, if you're having a panic attack, and you can, like, apparently, uh, if you do it right, you can, like, center any... I don't... I've never done it. I don't fucking know how it works. But I assume it's a similar thing. <laughs> Maybe. Dude, recently, I got the idea... Um, to like, you know, try and get more in touch with my Australian heritage. So I hit my mum up and was like, "Hey, mum, can you send me a didgeridoo?" So <laughs> she uh, she's sending me a didgeridoo, which is like currently still stuck in customs because apparently sending a piece of wood into the country is like a really hard thing to do. Bro, holy shit! Okay, story about that. So I play drums, and I recently got back into playing drums a lot. So I've been trying to keep up. So I have a little practice pad. I have an eight inch Vic Firth practice pad, which on one side is soft rubber and the other side is hard rubber and it's solid wood. So just rubber and wood. And I can no longer travel with it through the airport because every single time I went through TSA, they had to pull <clears> it out <throat> of my backpack. They had to wipe it. Then they'd search my whole backpack. And after like the 10th time, I was like, why does this keep getting flagged? And they pointed on the screen. They're like, see how it's orange? Orange means stuff blows up. That's orange. I was like, well, that's not a really good answer. And he's like, this is going to happen every time. So I stopped traveling with wood in my backpack, which really sucks. Damn. But apparently, wonder... yeah, apparently wood is a big deal. Damn, I've seen people who have, like, wooden laptop cases and stuff like that. I wonder if that, like, has Well, and it's effect. weird because, like, I guess they see the wood and can see a laptop in it. And mine is a solid piece of wood. And apparently that is just – it really mm. makes me worry about, like – this is what TS like. This is what the body scanner is for, and like the deep X-ray, so they can find wood and be like, "Oh no, the wood." <laughs> yeah, so, there's a bunch of weird I, shit I about it. the TSA, man. It's like you can't travel with more than three ounces of liquid, but it's like you can just travel with two, three ounces of liquid and a six ounce container. So once you get over the other <laughs> side, you could just like put them both in the six ounce container, and a now a you have six like, ounces of liquid. A bunch of like little shooters of like chicken noodle soup lining your backpack. <laughs> Totally fine. Yeah. yeah. But and I mean, you just hey, whip the America. ball out on the other end of security. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, you know, we're built, this, this country, we're built off loopholes and gray areas. It's the greatest country <laughs> in the world. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I've actually been watching that uh, 9 11 documentary that came out on Netflix. Uh, I, I haven't seen that? it yet. Oh, dude, it's crazy. I, I remember, didn't know. God, what was the one before the Fahrenheit 9 11 from back in the day? I remember that one. Was that a movie or a documentary? I personally thought it was a YouTube video. It was a it was a documentary, and I thought it was just on YouTube. It might have been like on DVD or something, but Fahrenheit 9/11 was. Did that shit have Nicolas Cage in it? Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, there no, was a 9/11 movie. Moore. Oh, it was Michael Moore. Okay, yeah. but there was a 9/11 movie with Nicolas Cage in it with a shitty mustache. Yeah, dude, and he was like a firefighter or something. Yeah, yeah. And it was, oh, God, it was the most, well, because I don't know, were you in America after 9-11? No, I was in Australia. I was like 12 oh. years old. Dude, okay, that shit okay. happened, this shit will make you feel old, man. That shit happened 20 years ago. I know, that's fucking crazy. Because I was, that's, okay, we're closer to the same age than I thought. Because I was, uh, God, I was like 10 or something. Mm -hmm. But, dude, yeah, I remember, like, I will never forget the, like, at Wait, the did time. did you think I was felt... way older or way younger? Um, well, see, it's a double gauge because I'm 27 and I get accused of being 35 and also 19. And okay. it's because we're dudes with glasses and beards. I have zero idea how to gauge anyone's age. <laughs> and also, I get called by uh, anyone who has glasses and a beard. People are like, oh, you look just like him. And it's like, no, we just share two accessories that are similar. <laughs> but, But yeah, I remember being like a kid. And it happening and everyone being really patriotic. But then, like, looking back as an adult and realizing, like, it wasn't patriotic. It was just, like, really racist. 
people were like burning down mosques and like white dudes were like hugging each other and like beating up taxi drivers and it was a terrible time. <laughs> yeah, horrible terrible, man. Terrible time. <clears throat> yeah, there's there was a bunch of stuff in this documentary that was like really uh concerning. But yeah, basically what I took from it is like yes, Donald Trump was bad, but I think Bush was worse. Oh, yeah. Donald Trump is like a lunatic, but George Bush was a war criminal, you know? Yeah, dude. I, like Donald Trump is like really shitty and honestly hilarious. I don't like him, but talk about like one of the funniest presidents we've ever had, just like from the perspective of him being an insane person. But like George yeah. Bush was like killing kids and shit, you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I think Donald Trump, like, had he had, like, any amount of wits about him and was able to get together, like, somewhat of an administration that was able to carry out any of his, like, ridiculous ideas, then, yes, he would have been way worse. But he yes, just wasn't. Yeah. He was too incompetent to do that. Well, so. no, that's what I'm saying. Like, no one took him seriously enough for his, like, evil schemes to come through. But Bush was, like, Bush was, like, an old enough political oil family to like achieve horrible thing like with dick cheney and like his whole cabinet of like evil war criminals like yeah that was a like donald trump yeah, sucks it but fucked. it's cool that's not happening as well i'm not one to say it's not happening anymore who fucking knows what's going on but you know here we are and at least i don't know at least we haven't fucking blown up the whole country kind of so yeah yeah, we're we're living in a in a semi decent time, I'd say. Uh, a lot of people yeah, are like yeah. complaining about how shitty everything is, but I think like as far as like being a minority goes, or uh, you know, as far as shittiness in the world goes in general, I think there's pretty much no better time to be alive than now. I think like you wouldn't. I I personally would not want to go back like twenty years and. and oh my god! Yeah. Time. <laughs> no, completely. And, like, that's the crazy part, too, is, like, there's always going to be atrocities going on and terrible things. But, like, especially from my perspective, like, I am a white male who lives in America who, like, owns property. Like, I am as made as any human being on this planet can be. Like, that's why I try and be very grateful. Like, I don't have a lot of worries because of my current situation and being like that. And I really try not to take that for granted. Like, Sometimes I mm. bitch about shit, but there are people who actually have it hard, like for real have it hard. And I've been through some tough shit before, but like, you know, I get to make money doing what I love and like have a nice cat. Like I really shouldn't complain about anything. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wait, you own property? Well, um, I'm paying them. I'm actually buying my parents' house right now. <laughs> so nice. not like property, not like land. I'm not like, got, like I got an acre out in fucking minnesota i just have like a townhouse <laughs> in lakewood colorado but you know nice. it's nice to pay a mortgage because also i'm watching all my friends in denver the rent go up which fucking sucks but mortgage is pretty much like been 1200 a month for as long as i can remember so yeah it's you know and now yeah now i'm seeing people who are like trying to move to aurora it's like two thousand dollars a month it's like oh my god man dude yeah the rent in denver is crazy same in san francisco it's like yeah i the rent. heard san francisco i heard san francisco is the most expensive rent in the country right now it's yeah that's probably true i was looking at houses the other day just I, every now and then i I just like i'm googling around Peek the internet around. And i'm like yeah i'm like i'm gonna have a look on zillow <laughs> yeah <laughs> see look at all the shit that i can't afford um <laughs> Window and, shop. Uh, yeah yeah totally and man, yeah, a lot of the houses here, especially like if you go a little bit north into like Marin and stuff, are just like twelve million dollars and like crazy. Yeah, it's extremely. There's a. Uh, I uh, I don't know if I'm proud of this or embarrassed. I just recently the other day got the uh, top fan badge for NPR on Facebook. But oh shit! <laughs> Does that just I don't mean know you, how like, commented a ton of times. On I, I think that's it. Yeah, well, because I oh, I'm very fucking weak when it comes to fighting on the internet someone says something <laughs> i don't like i have no self-control and npr shared this article about this house that's oh it's in boston and it's like 13 feet wide it's kind of like a shotgun house so it's a couple rooms back but it's really really thin just right. sold for 1.9 million dollars it's like one of the smallest houses to ever sell for almost two million dollars dude it's that's really, insane it's like i try not to let that depress me but like damn that fucking sucks. I remember, like, when I was a kid, being a millionaire was the most money you could have. Bill Gates was a millionaire, <laughs> and it was, like, a million fucking dollars. You could buy everything. And now right. it's, like, if I had a million dollars, I would probably burn through it, like, pretty quick on, like, synths and, like, I don't know, Thai food. Like, it, would, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't last. 
yeah, you could not retire on a million dollars anymore. I mean, like, yeah, which is spooky. probably probably the best way to to spend a million dollars if you had it would be to invest three quarters of it into like something like yeah, stock market yeah. stock or something something bonds, fail maybe. safe. Well, I don't know if fail safe is the right term, but like, I have a friend in Canada who uh, Air Canada is Canada's only international airline. And they have a habit of going bankrupt, but they will get bailed out 100% of the time because Canada as a country needs an international airline. So (laughs) three times in his life, he's bought Air Canada when they go bankrupt for really cheap. And then they get bailed out and he sells it. And he just like keeps making money off (laughs) this airline that will never go away because it's all Canada has. So, you know, like something like that. But that also feels like a little... Feels a little like I don't know. I'm not. I've never invested in anything. I'm not. I can barely do math. You know that's it, that world scares me. <laughs> Dude, I'm kind of in the I, same boat. Do you fuck around I, with like crypto or anything like that? No, no, no. I, I slightly embarrassing. I never even made it out of pre-algebra in high school. I'm not. I can like count four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Right. That's about it. What is, what is pre-algebra? Uh, it's like for kids who are not smart enough to do algebra, I had to do like basic long division and stuff. I couldn't, there was like, they're like, look, Matt, you're uh, not quite smart enough to incorporate letters into your math yet. So we're just going to give you (laughs) math. that's only numbers. And I was like, thanks guys. (laughs) Jokes on them. I dropped out of high school. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, really? What, at what age? Uh, 16. Because I... In Colorado, you can drop out when you're 16 without parental support. Mm -hmm. And I got a job at Subway and a girlfriend. And I was like, I am a fucking man. Like, this is it. (laughs) Like, I'm going to make my way in the world. So I dropped out of high school and moved into my girlfriend's parents' house and worked at Subway and just, like, made Moombatone in her basement. (laughs) And I was, like, fucking king of the world. And then, yeah, eventually getting fired from Subway and having no diploma. Takes away, strips the king feeling from you, but it's okay. We're back. We've bounced back. We're good. <laughs> That's a great story. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I kind of had a similar experience actually. I like when I finished high school. So, so my parents were basically like, "You can do two things: you can get a job, or you can keep studying." And I was like, "All right, I'll try this job thing." So I like started <laughs> delivering pizzas because I was like, "I don't really like standing up and doing shit." So I was like, "I can just sit down and like listen to tunes in my car yeah. and drive oh. around." I was a big sit downer. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, dude. I think yeah, I think we we connect on a lot of levels in this way. <laughs> <laughs> it's guys with beards and glasses. We love sitting. Yeah, dude. We're sitters. <laughs> um, so yeah, I uh, got a job delivering pizzas at Pizza Hut, and Sick. literally would just like smoke weed and drive around high, <laughs> listening to tunes in my car, delivering pizzas, and like I'd always be like late with the pizzas and shit. Oh, and so yeah. I, I also got fired from this job and then I was like, fuck. And then I like got a, another pizza delivery job at a different pizza place. <laughs> uh, also got fired from that place um, because that, that that place I got fired from because I my back was like really sore because I was just a fat fucking kid who would just sit down all the time <laughs> and eat food. And um, I was like, man, I can't come in. My back's all fucked up. I like getting in and out of the car and shit. And I was like 18. I was like, How? my back shouldn't be sore when I'm fucking 18. <laughs> yeah, right. um, I was just so unhealthy as a kid. I was fucked up. I didn't start like exercising until I was like 26. Like I had no concept of like how to exercise and shit. It was crazy. Oh, bro, um, that literally it, sounds like I've, I've gotten to the year in my life where I've realized it's time to fucking start exercising. Or right. I, I and you have to like that long. Yeah, and you have to like learn a ton of shit. You're like, what is what does an exercise routine look like? And like, how do I? Yeah, like, wait, I can't just run really <laughs> fast for an hour and be okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I so I got fired from that job, and then I was like, oh man, I should like go study. So then I like went to this um, thing called TAFE, which is like the equivalent of community college, and uh, tried to get a diploma there in music, and then failed that. And then just took a bunch of years off and just smoked weed and fucked around with Ableton. And then I was like, oh, I think I like have taught myself enough shit now to like maybe understand it enough to go and get a degree in this stuff. And then went to SAE and like got a degree in audio engineering. But yeah, kind of kind of the same trajectory as like I just like fucked up totally in school and just like (laughs) smoked a ton of weed and shit. Dude, no, and like literally when I was working at Subway, two things. 
First of all, I got fired from Subway five different times, and I worked at six different Subways. Kept oh getting fired and going to a different Subway because there, there's more <laughs> Subways than any other fast food chain. They are everywhere, and it does right. not take much skill. So I'd keep getting fired, <clears throat> and eventually I got to assistant manager where they let me work alone. So I would, every night I would close the store from 4 to 11 p.m., and the other person who worked with me would leave at 7 and then I would just sit in the back with my laptop making music alone <laughs> and, like, making sandwiches in between beats and did that for, like, three years until they caught on. And they were like, what the fuck are you doing? And fired me then. <laughs> and I was using pretty much all my paycheck to buy, like, Burger King and weed because I was getting, I think, like, <laughs> six twenty five an hour then. Good days. Those are good days. <laughs> Very formative. Wait, did you keep getting fired because you kept working on music at work? Um, no, uh, it was multiple reasons. Smelling like weed at work. See, this is the ironic part. I had a very good work ethic, but I was also stupid. So, like, mm. I'd show up on time every day, but then I'd also show up on time, like, reeking like weed and stuff. Uh. And, like, I would work really hard, but then I would, like, do the wrong thing. Like, I'd do something with a lot of, like, gumption, but, like, also incorrectly. <laughs> so it was, like, you know, I was, I was really fucking trying, but I was also so high on, like, bad brick weed that... It really dampened my ability to function in a workplace. But like I said, <laughs> you know, the weed and Fruity Loops eventually led to more weed and Fruity Loops. And now we're here. Donald Trump's out of office. You know, let's go. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does um smoking bad brickweed affect your work more than smoking good brickweed? Is there such a thing as good brickweed? That's what I was about to say. I bet somewhere in the world. You could find good brickweed, but I've smoked a lot of brickweed. My favorite was I'd get weed. It's like the brickweed in Colorado. What is, what like, is, what is brickweed? Weed they would uh, usually came from like Mexico, and it was just like really bad outdoor, and they'd compress it into a brick. Uh, they'd gotcha. squish it. And like I'd buy like an ounce was $50. I never bought an ounce. $50 was a lot of fucking money. So like me and my friend would each get five bucks, and for $10 we could get like three to five grams and like a lot of times it'd be a corner like it looked like a corner of a piece of wood like broken off and it was brown <laughs> had a lot of black seeds you'd hit the smoke and it'd be like kind of yellow and make you cough really hard oh, and, gross. and i really look back on it like was i high on weed or was it like a lack of oxygen to my brain that was doing uh, the trick yeah. whatever it was it made me hungry and nauseous and get fired but you know then I remember the first time I smoked, like, medical weed. My friend's like, yo, we got this from a store. And I was like, you can't get weed from a store. And he's like, yeah, the government made it. It's called G13. And looking back on it, it was still shitty weed, but it wasn't, like, brick weed. And I, like, took two hits of it. It felt like I was on fucking acid. It was, like, insane. And, <laughs> yeah, that's when I realized, like, okay, maybe, like, taking big hits of yellow smoke weed is, like, not the healthiest so I switched to Colorado weed. But then, I mean, long story short, that I barely smoke weed anymore. It is way too fucking strong for me. I get, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get way too high too easy. I wish they had bad weed. Like, I would love to roll up a joint of, like, some bad weed and smoke all of it and not have, like, a panic attack. But now it's, like, two hits of weed and, I, like, my hands get all sweaty and, like, I can't do it. Yeah, I've also had this same experience in Australia. I used to smoke tons of weed, but um, the the we only had two kinds of weed. We had hydrogen and bush, and <laughs> hydrogen is just like a contraction of hydroponic. So yeah. it's like stuff that's grown under the lights, and then bush is just shit that's grown outside. Yeah, um, I bet bush weed and brick weed were pretty, pretty, pretty similar tier. Yeah, that's probably true. But yeah, that that weed was fucking disgusting. <laughs> yeah, bush, bush weed and brick weed are the kind of things that make you lose your job at fast food restaurants. So, yeah, it. totally. Yeah, you don't want to fuck around with bushies and driving around pizzas. Um, <laughs> Woo, living life on the edge. <laughs> Man, it's crazy that you could get an ounce of 50 bucks. In Australia, an ounce was $320. Yeah. I, uh, it was like not I, good quality. Yeah, well, and that's the thing too. Like the good weed in Colorado was like $20 for like 1.5 grams, which I guess isn't that expensive, but... As a, like, young kid, like, I thought it was expensive, but now knowing, like, how much it was in Australia, like, it really wasn't that bad, <laughs> but, and now, like, really good weed is, like, cheap as fuck, which is crazy to me, but, mm. you know, I'm, I'm glad I was born when weed was still illegal. Like, I loved, like, 
getting weed and like hiding in the woods behind my house and smoking it and then like spraying cologne on and like putting eye drops in. <clears throat> like I miss the entire social activity of like doing something illegal when you smoked weed. And now it's like right. I can just smoke inside and that's not very fun. <laughs> yeah, something that's like taboo that you have to hide. It kind of has some some like weird essence to it. That's yeah. kind of fun. No, and I mean if you remember one of the side effects of weed was paranoia. And mm. like so that would just, I like, always... double down on like, the whole experience. Yeah, well, and I, I always wondered if, like, was it paranoia because weed was illegal, and now that weed is legal, paranoia has gone away? Or is it just, like, it actually makes you paranoia and it was, like, illegal? Because I got expelled from high school for weed. I got fired for weed. It really did a number on my childhood. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, and now I can barely yeah. smoke it. Times have yeah. changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of the same. I, I also can't smoke it anymore. I had to stop because, yeah, at some point it, along the way, I, I don't know if it was like the weed got better or if my brain chemistry changed, but yeah, lo- somewhere along the, the line, uh, it started giving me chronic anxiety. And the, yeah. I, I would get anxiety in the weirdest ways, man. I, I would, it would uh, express itself in like physical anxiety for me, like not mental anxiety. I wouldn't be sitting there going like, oh, fuck, people are like out to get me. And like, oh, what did that person mean when they said this? They might have actually <laughs> meant this. Like I didn't, it wasn't that kind of shit. It was like, man, I think my hip is dislocated. Or like, <laughs> oh, man, it feels like my my rib cage has like separated into two pieces. What the hell is going on? Like, <laughs> Dude, and all this. I would get, I kind of get both. Like I don't have the best teeth. They're not like horrible, but like I kind of have bad teeth and like I'd smoke weed and be like, Oh, my fucking teeth are going to fall out. And they like get all sweaty. And I'd be like, oh my God, like I have a, a problem where I sweat too much. And then I'd be like, oh, no one's going to like me because I'm sweaty. And then like an hour later, I'd be like, this is not fucking worth it anymore. <laughs> but, you know, Dude. I'm like I said, it's weird because I used to smoke weed to quell my anxiety. And now not smoking weed is what keeps me anxiety free. So. <laughs> Dude, it's so funny. Like what kind of... Uh like underlying anxieties weed can amplify oh god i like, know and it's a, I, a I slight think it's... hip pain can like transpose into like oh man yeah. my hip is like literally dislocated yeah no and like when i'm sober i never have thoughts like am i going to die soon um like is my hair gonna fall out like that's only when there's thc coursing through my blood so that's actually when i realized i was like i think i'm an adult now like this is this is the sign of adulthood <laughs> is weed makes you panic so there we go yeah, I, I also think that, um, uh, what was I going to say, to some degree, um, I forgot what I was going to say. It's the weed. It's the Y'all weed. Crazy I've been smoking, off the weed. Been smoking too much weed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. I have some questions here from my manager, actually. We can jump over to those. Oh, yeah. Just so every, every now and Yeah, every now and then I, I hit up and nod and I'm like, hey, what's up? Give me some questions to ask Oh, God. And, okay. I'm ready for these. I forgot Anand manages you. Wow. I love it. Oh, yeah. Dude, Anand's the best. Yeah, he also, like, introduces this show at the start of every episode. He's like, hey, I'm Anand, and, like, says a bunch of shit. Just because I... <laughs> oh, my God, sick. Yeah, I really, I really don't like doing the intros to these shows. And I was actually a little curious. Oh, hello, kitty. Is that a dog yeah, or a cat? That's a cat. That's YouTube. Okay, that's a cat. Okay, I only yeah, saw yeah. pointy ears. But, yeah, uh... I was curious when you're like, all right, let's go in. And we just started. I was like, hmm, weird way to start a podcast, but okay. Oh, yeah, no, Anand will, like, do the whole intro thing. Like, yeah, they, symphony uh, roll. <laughs> yeah, have you ever listened to an episode? Uh, yeah, I listened to this Essex one. Okay, um, yeah, so you would have heard Anand introduce that one. Yeah, yeah, and I've listened to, uh, I think I've just listened to the ones that I really, the only podcast I listen to that are, like, music involved are ones with my friends. Like, I've listened to the Willie Joy podcast with, like, Buku and stuff like that. Mm. And, like, the Duncan Trussell Hour, Family Hour with Freddie Todd. Like, I just oh, like nice. listening to my friends. It's nice. Dude, it's like I'm I can pretend to... I'm hanging out with them. Yeah, I'm about to have Duncan on my podcast. Uh, oh, dude, that is like, – oh, my God. I feel like yeah. such, like, not, like, to be, like, self-deprecating, but such a low-tier guest compared to Duncan Trussell. Like, holy shit. That dude is, like, a <laughs> – a smart yeah. fella. He's yeah, he's awesome, man. I was on his podcast a while back as well. He's oh, a, dude, I'll listen to that one. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, man, he's a he's a cool dude. That Midnight Gospel show was fucking sweet. It was crazy. And it's funny cuz I was never super into Adventure Time, but I really loved the animation. Um, did mm. you ever see that show Super Jail on Adult Swim? Yeah, I did actually. 
Yeah, I love really like fluid psychedelic animation. So I really like. Was, was that Gospel. also animated by Pemberton Ward? Or? N- no, it wasn't. But it was like Super Jail is the show that got me into the world of like saturated thick line animation. That like it's mm. like I don't know. I find it. I like fun, cute cartoons like Adventure like Time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a cute Meatwad's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> um, all right, let's go to these management questions. Uh, man, you've got a lot of beverages you're going through right now. There's three different beverages I see. I got a fourth one over here. No, okay. Holy okay, shit. this is what's going down. We have coffee, mm-hmm. we have water, and we have kratom. Oh, kratom. What? Are, yeah, let's actually talk about kratom. What, um, is, uh, what is that shit? It's, I've been suggested the, to take it a few times by a few different people. It's... It's hard to grasp fully. So it's in the coffee family. Okay. And it's a leaf. So it's not like tea. It's like ground up powder from the leaf. And you put it in water. So it's not like tea where you steep it. You actually drink the like leaf concentrate mm-hmm. or whatever. But it's like, God, the best way I can put it, which sounds bad, but it's like the only way to explain it is like it's an extremely mild opiate. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like, like drinking coffee in Kratom is like poor person speedballing. It's like, Damn, it dude. Like. <laughs> and it's just, it's like when I have days off, I, I miss smoking weed and panicking and Kratom is my new substitute for something that can get me very mildly. And weed is much stronger than Kratom, but Kratom right. gets me like slightly buzzed without the like fear of the devil and stuff like that. So hmm. it's just my latest vice mixed with coffee. You know, I recently quit cigarettes. And so it's it's been hard. I really like vices, <laughs> and I've been <laughs> cutting them out of my life. So it's like I need I need something at this point. So yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I just kinda... drink kratom and Ooh, good. Yeah, I've gone through the same thing of cutting through vices, and y- you need a couple, right? Like a coffee is yeah. definitely one of mine, and yeah, y- yeah, you need to find ones that are like sustainable. Yeah, no, and like. People are like, oh, caffeine's bad for you, and, like, coffee ruins your teeth. And it's like, look, I used to be drunk as shit and smoke cigarettes all the time. I will take coffee. <laughs> that is fine with me. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's one of the hard parts <laughs> about quitting smoking is, like, I'm really hungry now all the time, and I fucking eat snacks all the time. And, like, back in the day, if I was hung- wake up hungry, just smoke a cigarette. Easy peasy, you know? <laughs> like, get that out of the way. But now it's like, I want I want breakfast, and I want, like, good things. I'll, like, crave, like an entire meal and shit. And that used to never happen when I was smoking cigs. So now I'm trying to balance like not getting fat as shit by not smoking cigarettes. But, yeah, it's a tough know. one. How did you, uh, in- how'd you quit cigarettes? Did you like use oh, Chantix man. or something or did you? No, use- I, f- well, and it's crazy. This is like not to be that dude, but like this is why I know anyone can do it. I smoked inside my house for almost 13 years, almost two packs a day. I would sit right here in the studio, fucking chain smoke and write music. And that was it. And um, the girl I was with at the time uh, just kept pressuring me to quit. And it was really annoying. Like when you smoke cigarettes and people are always like, you should quit. It's like really fucking annoying. And one morning I didn't even have plans on it. I woke up and just threw my cigarettes away. And I was like, fine, is this what you want? And (laughs) it wasn't that dramatic. It didn't happen in such a exasperated way but yeah and literally never looked back just one day was like okay i guess i will die and also they were getting expensive and i didn't realize that i quit smoking and at the end of the month i was like why do i have 800 extra dollars like where did this come from it's like cigarettes i were buying were like 11 dollars a pack and i was spending like smoking almost two packs a day so but now I use that to justify buying food all the time, which is bad. I'm like, oh, I can afford Chipotle because this is as much as two packs of cigarettes. But that's probably almost just as bad for me as <laughs> cigarettes. But, you know, like I said, I need some sort of vice. Yeah, I don't know. I think Chipotle is probably a little better than, than a, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. At least for the lungs. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, had, I had Chipotle last night. It was really good. Dude, Chipotle, yeah, Chipotle slaps. My old studio used to be right next to a Chipotle, so I yeah, used to my, it all the time. That's my problem. I got like half a mile away at Chipotle, and I love food that you can hold. Like I'm, a, I like functioning. Like I like doing multiple things at once. So like something you can hold and eat is like, I'm with it. 
Wait, but if you want to like do things at the same time, like why wouldn't you want the food in a bowl so you can like have your hands free, you know? I've never thought of that. No, just kidding. I've thought of that. I don't know. I like, <laughs> you know, like mouse on one hand, food in one hand. But to be fair, like Chipotle burritos are not the easiest thing to eat, but I don't get them like stuffed, stuffed. I always get them a little mm -hmm. like, you know, You're like, make I tell them I want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make this like, like accessible for someone who's using <laughs> one hand. Because I've gotten Chipotle burritos that were like a fucking joke. They just like take a mound of food and slap a tortilla on top of it. And they're like, here you right. go. Where it's like no longer like longer in one dimension <laughs> than Dude. it's like just kind of becomes a ball. No, I was going to say literally like <laughs> I was in L.A. a few days ago and I went to the airport and I just needed food quick and I ordered Chipotle and it was literally a ball. They like rolled my burrito up and all the edges of the tortilla were in one part. It looked like a, like a sack of gold coins. Yeah, but dude. it was <laughs> it was a joke. And then I sit there and just like look very foolish trying to eat this fucking plate of meat and rice out of a tortilla it was you know <laughs> yeah you kind of just time. like eat the top off the bowl and then you're sort of just <laughs> yeah, like holding a yeah. little bread trough of fucking yeah rice <laughs> no and, and it's shit. like if you let go with one hand you'll lose all structural integrity so you like can't grab a fork so at that point you're just like a dog just like yeah but, you know like i said life's hard sometimes <laughs> <laughs> the life of touring a dj <laughs> uh, just covered in beans all day <laughs> <laughs> all right we got a we got a non questions all right he said i know you're probably sick of talking about blocked uh, <sighs> but but i wonder how you deal with having such a hugely viral song and the expectations that sets when delivering a live set do you break it out on special occasions or do you have to play it every set uh and do you or do you do edits and vips or remixes do you play those out or like are you just sick of it in general at this point um, literally yes to every single one of those. Okay. <laughs> First of all, right after the hype got big, my salty hipster ass was like, I'm never playing that fucking song again. <laughs> and I stopped playing it in my sets. And then Tyler of the trees is like, what are you doing, bro? Like people expect to hear that. And I was like, I don't want to play it. He's like, that's not your call. Like people see you, they expect to hear blocked. And I was like, <laughs> you are right. So what I used to do is like make little edits. Like I had this one like RIP, but it was like a bass nectar edit where it was uh this build like this super fucking over the top. I forget which song it was. It was a digital ethos and bass nectar collab that had like a minute fifty second build, and I would just drop blocked after that. So it would build and everyone would be like, oh bass nectar song, bass nectar song, and then it would drop and just be blocked and everyone would be like, Bleh. And then of course the the infamous uh super silliest edit. Oh, dude, and yeah, I played that shit a lot. In <laughs> you sets. played that more than I have. That is, dude. you and Yeti are like, so, I commend yeah, you guys for dropping that. Yeah, Yeti played that shit first, and then I was like, that's a good song. I got to play that <laughs> shit, because it, it's kind of a, a meme uh, uh, for the people who it don't is, know no, what it, it is. It is a meme. That, I yeah. hope you know, that is my favorite version of that song. Like, that, that is, and like, probably, what I would hope that, like, everything, like, the hubris of that song would lead to just like <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> so yes, yeah. I'm very happy with that one. And also, so yeah, I've recently, now the shows are back, I play it every set. Um and especially do you, like Do you just play the playing, original or do you do like edits of it? Yeah. Stuff? It's been long enough to where I can bring the original back. So I was doing like the <laughs> truth remix of the there's a bleep loop remix out there. The Dirt Monkey remix, which is fun. But it's, yeah, it's officially past enough time to where I can do the original. Some people, like, Rez still plays the original. Troy Boy still plays the original, which is, like, but now, since less people play it, I feel like it's okay that I play it. Mm. But And people still, like, yell when I play it and shit. Like, it still works, you know, it's got impact. But, you know, like I said, I will never be, like... Yay, blocked, woo, you know, I've been <laughs> fucking, I was over that song before it even came out, but that's how I am with all my music. Like, by the time it's released, I don't ever want to hear that shit again. So, yeah, I feel that, that one kind of bit me, but, you know, like I said, I own it, and at this point, I've got to play it for the kids, so. <laughs> Out of curiosity, um, I mean, I'm sure you see the royalty checks come in every month. Uh, how much does that song make, like, on a monthly basis? Um, twenty million dollars in my lifetime. Really? No, I think I, no, I think I've made. I think I've made since it came out like four thousand dollars, 
which oh, on every that's other good track, for a single song, man. Every, I think the most I've made for uh, the next tier down is like three hundred. So it's yeah. definitely like eight hundred percent more than my usual music. But no, people are literally like, "Yo, you must live off that song." And it's like, no, like that's not really how it works. But <laughs> yeah, for for a royalty check, I've never seen over a thousand. So like, it's really nice. But, yeah, totally. That's solid, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at the plays on Spotify now. It's funny the the whole EP, like every other track, has like thirty thousand plays, and then this one's yeah, one point four million. Oh, God, and it's funny because like it's like the third track the on other, the EP and stuff. The other tracks are like be, like um on that EP is a fucking banger, but you know <laughs> I don't get once you finish a song, it's not up to you if it's good or not. It's the world decides. Everything yeah. I've made that I consider like a masterpiece, like I've written like my magnum opus. People do not give a shit about, but blocked. I wrote blocked in like two and a half hours because I got booked for like a run of shows with Truth, and I was like, I need some more like deep 140. So I had like three days off, and I was like, I'm just gonna really quickly write a deep dubstep song, and I was like thinking about Cryptic Minds Bad Man VIP, where it's like whoa whoa boom 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 boom, and I was like, that's sick. But what if it was like whoa 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 instead of boom boom boom? <laughs> and now we're here. <laughs> That's literally how dubstep production works. It's like, oh, man, what if I took the bow bow and made it a wall wall? <laughs> Dude, and it's funny because, like, on Twitter, people will be like, DMVU invented the genre. And then, like, reasonable people like Alex Sonis, he's like, uh, no, this is deep dubstep. It's just funny because, like, kids, you, like, rhythm here. And they're like, what is this new genre? And it's like, I grew up in Denver. Like, this is very stereotypical deep dubstep. But, you know, like I said, not my call. It's up to the kids. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, same with, like, my latest Pleasure Seeker song on, on my latest album. It's, like, a thing I made in Love 40 minutes. Yeah, dude, I was on a fucking ketamine bender, and I made it in, like, 40 minutes. <laughs> and- Man, bro, I will not lie. I, like, really wish I could do ketamine. I have problem. I don't like dissociating. But, like, it, I've never done a drug that I don't like that I want to like. Like, mm. I do, I've done K, and then I, like, have a terrible time, and I come out of it, and I'm like, God damn it, like, I wish I had more fun. <laughs> Wait, why do you want to like it? I just, I don't know, dude. Everyone who does it seems like they have so much fun. Write cool songs, you know, spill Chipotle all over themselves. Like, and then when I do it, I just like fucking panic and like, yeah, it's just, I'm I'm like, I think I'm very sensitive to psychoactive substances. Like I ate acid for the first time in five years, a few months ago. And it was like way too fucking intense. And I used to eat like four or five hits of acid and I ate two and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Two is like a ton, man. Like I think half is a lot. Yeah, well, dude, I used to be a macro dose guy. I think that's why. I think I really, <laughs> really over fucking did psych because I consider ketamine a psychedelic drug. I think it yeah. is considered a psychedelic drug, and I think I really overdid the psychedelics. I'd eat a quarter of mushrooms at a time. This was like throughout high school and shit, and I would eat acid and like go to school. Like I went to fucking high school high on acid and sat in class just like whoa so it makes sense that i really overdid it now the scales are tipping so now i can't enjoy anything that's even remotely mind altering in that way (laughs) but you know Mm, i hope i do think like maybe someday i'll be able to do it like i hope like i turn 35 and i can eat a little acid and have fun but for the time being it's kratom and coffee that's where we're at yeah, it, it, we really did have similar trajectories, man. I, I kind of did a similar thing. Like, I ate a, lot, a ton of psychedelics when I was younger. Dude, and yeah. I'm telling you, glasses, beard, dubstep. The only way you get food. there is through yeah. <laughs> through it's, the psychedelic it's the, portals. It's the gauntlet. The gauntlet of psychedelia <laughs> and fast food. That'll get you there. <laughs> yeah. When, what people this, ask me, uh, when people ask me, like, how you get to the top, I say, you eat a bunch of cheeseburgers and you do acid <laughs> until your brain doesn't work right. <laughs> <laughs> until the only thing that sounds good <laughs> to the only ideas that occur to you is taking the bum bum and turning it into a wah wah <laughs> good thing I ate 80 hits of acid to figure out to turn the attack down <laughs> woo yeah. dude what Progress. is this tattoo on your bicep it looks like a lot of words yes this is a it's a hell of a lot of words I don't know the lighting in here is weird um, mm. it's lyrics to a song called the dive part 2 by idea and abilities Mm-hmm. And actually, almost all my tattoos are, like, music-related. I fucking, like, Mala on my arm. Oh, uh, actually, dude. this one isn't. It's funny. This is just, I think it's a cool shape. And everyone's like, what's that mean? And I'm like, it literally <laughs> just looks cool. Like, wait. some of my tattoos have, like, meaning. Um you have a tattoo wait. of Mala? As yeah. In, like, a dubstep guy? Yeah. Oh, dude, he's playing at uh, Infrasound. 
Uh, no, he's not. His fucking visa got denied. Oh, shit, but really? guess who they're replacing him with? Who? Koki, which is the best person you oh. could possibly replace him with. So now they left, because it says Mala, half of Digital Mystics. They can still uh-huh. leave half of Digital Mystics up. So ah, yeah, they, they, they announced that the yesterday. Whole, they're like, oh, they, we don't want to change like too much of the flyer. <laughs> That's why they got Koki. They're like, we can't afford to change the flyer for a third time. <laughs> which, by the way, dude, I'm so stoked for your set. I'm going to be at Infrasound all weekend. Dude, thank you. Yeah, likewise, I'm I'm gonna be there at least from Saturday. I think I get in on yeah, I, I think I'm, I get in on Friday and I fly out on Sunday. So, oh nice. I'm, this is the first festival in like three or four years where I'm staying all three days. Dude, hell yeah, yeah. If you play on Friday or Saturday night, I'll be there. I oh wait, play Saturday night. Hold on, let me have not a look at, the... not at the same time as you. I checked the schedule. We're at different times. Are we on the same stage though? I'm on the pyramid stage. Okay. Um, Which, not to be a head ass, but I actually turned down a main stage slot because I have a very like romanticized special connection to the pyramid stage. Hmm. Why is so that? So I took. Oh man, I've just. Oh, and for we some, it's like we don't even play on the same day. My Mister Bill set is like on the Friday. Oh. Uh, and it's the Kill Bill set that's on the Saturday. Oh, okay. Uh, are you doing the Grill Smith thing on Saturday too? Were you part I of might, the, yeah, the I'm not 80 person group chat where he was like, I hey, was. let's do a back to back. And I'm like, Chris, that's a lot of fucking people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I might. I might come. Are you going to go there? Uh, well, see, and that's the thing. I said I'm going to, but I realized it's like a couple hours before I play. And I don't know if that's like it's kind of frowned upon, but also like slightly inappropriate. So I might like drop one t- song that I would like never play in my set. Uh, I'll play mm. Blocked. I'll play the super silliest remix of Blocked and then just flip <laughs> the grill over and leave. <laughs> yeah, the Friday set is actually the one I'm more stoked about because it's uh, an IDM set, which I haven't played in a long time. And I've been like Sick. doing my head in over like what to even make this set because IDM to me has like, I don't know how to define it. So, Dude, no, I don't. I don't and it's crazy because like they got Telefon, Tel Aviv and shit like if you're yeah. like you aren't going to be the standard for IDM at this festival, like there's like uh, there's like a group of you, and like that would be yeah. if I were you, I'd be a little intimidated. I completely trust you to do <laughs> like knock that shit out of the park, but like if I were you, I would be afraid. <laughs> yeah, I kind of am because I haven't good played way. an IDM set in like a long ass time, and yeah, looking at sort of like what's going on, it's like Richard Divine, and then yeah. oh, it's like Holy yeah, Telephone Tel Aviv, and then the Flashbulb, and then Richard Divine, and then Boy de Bajan, and then me, and then Com Trues. So it's that like is I'm going just... to be the most psychedelic. Stra- I'm going to literally be at that stage for that entire set of music. Yeah, Man, I mean, Com Trues. I forgot he's playing. That's so dope. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's going to be like full dystopian vibes. Yeah. Oh man, you're mixing beverages now, jeez. Oh, I'm just uh, pouring. <laughs> I'm, I'm mixing up a concoction. I'm actually just watering down my kratom. Uh, it's too strong. Keeping it crazy. Yeah, it is. I'm cr- the thing about kratom is it tastes like fucking shit. Uh, Absolute garbage. Nice. But it's because I think it's because it kind of gets you high. And I think all things that are mind altering should taste bad. Like that's mm. that's how you know something will fuck you up is if it tastes like shit. Yeah, it's true. Kind of like a. Uh... What's that guy's name? Fucking, I don't actually, I won't say his name, but I got a friend who's just constantly <laughs> chewing cocoa leaves with like bicarb soda or whatever it is in there. Which I did for the first time at an Emancipator show. I didn't know that's how it worked. And some dude was it, this was like five or six years ago. Some dude was like, hey, like take this co- cacao leaf. And I was like, what do I do? He's like, hang on, like put baking soda in. He's like, now put yeah. it in your lip. And I was like, does it do anything? He's like, yeah. And I did it. And I like felt like I was on fucking cocaine. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Which I have was, a friend I... who just chews this shit like all day, every day. And his like teeth are always black and shit. And like, it just, <laughs> he, he got me to do it once. And I was like, this tastes like shit. Man, I don't, yeah, I, I can't do chewing things. I even tried chewing tobacco once in high school. I can't do the whole keeping something in my mouth i don't even like gum that much so Mm. yeah i feel you man i'm not not a fan of that shit either um all right we have another anand question he said you made a big post before lost lands about how all of your friends who make progressive or cutting edge or left field bass music or whatever you want to call it had an opportunity to share the good weird shit with a more mainstream crowd how'd that theory work out for you and uh, your cohort in practice. What does cohort mean? I've never even fucking heard that word. What is this shit? Um, I know from a rap song where he says, my cohorts go hard. 
That's the, that's the only. <laughs> I don't even know the definition. We'll but see, also, I'm yeah, look it, up. it means uh, companions and colleagues. So, how did you use ah. cohort in a sentence? You'd say a few of their cohorts decided to form a company. Okay, smartest so, uh, manager in the game. Yeah. So, how did that theory work out for you and your cohort in practice? <laughs> oh man, me and my cohort showed up and we played twenty-five behemoth sudden death VIPs and then just fucking left. No, actually. <laughs> um, I think it went okay. First of all, let's let's go over the whole fucking thing. Lost Lands. I didn't know about the stage I was playing. I kept seeing pictures of this little stage in the woods, and I was like, "That's what I'm playing." Fifteen minutes before my set, we go to the stage, and it is bigger than most main stages I've played. Did you see the pictures on my Instagram? I did. It looked Disg- huge. Fucking like three and a half stories up. Like literally, I yeah. thought I was playing the tiny stage and we stopped at this one and I was like, Where's my stage? And my manager's like, That's the stage. I was like, Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? So that was shocking. And 12th Planet was on right before me, which was like quite an honor. Like I like John's a very cool dude and it was crazy and there was like fire and his shit was all out. And then I get on stage and it was eleven o'clock when the noise ordinance start. So they fucking took half my volume away. Oh fuck. And Playing after 12th Planet, who's like smashing rhythm, going into like I opened with Lil Snake and Shades at half volume, was like I didn't realize that was happening because I like my booth monitors loud. And then the next day, everyone posted and they were like, What the fuck did they do to your set? Like, that was such <laughs> bullshit. And I'm sitting here like, Oh God, what do you mean? And then a bunch of my friends were like, It was really quiet. But by like 10 or 15 minutes in, I had a big ass crowd uh, who had come from other stages. So they didn't have the like, shock level of the music getting quieter and Mm -hmm. it went really fucking well i had a great time i played a bunch like little snake and like uh i played like a uh, sam binga track and like yeah i just tried to i played some heavy shit but i tried to keep it like creatively heavy you know Mm. so and i think that's literally the reason i keep getting booked at lost lands every year is because i play different music and like that is why i get the booking because they're like need someone who's not going to play rhythm and Mm. I'm on the dude. So, yeah, it was I, – I personally – there's a lot of haters, but I love Lost Lands. It is such a dope festival. And, like, it's run by – like, Excision being an artist who's really been through the fucking ringer. Like, it is run so fucking smoothly. The From the green room to the hospitality to, like, artist care to on-time transportation. Like, it is – he runs a tight ship, and it mm. is a really good time. I think – have you ever been – I think you would have a good time. No, they they offered me a slot this year, um, and it was also I think the same thing that, that I was supposed to be playing the same stage as you, like after the noise ordinances come in. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I don't want to play the like because I, I same I thought like forest stage or treehouse stage or whatever. I was yeah. Like, I was like, it sounds like some small side thing at three a.m. in the morning where there's going to be like yeah. fucking nobody and it's going to be like half volume and and on top of that they're offering me like a pretty small amount of money because I guess like. I mean, yeah, so I was just like those, all those combined things, like not a lot of money playing it early in the morning for like uh, at half volume and stuff. I was just like, this sounds like it's going to be like not a lot of people and it's going to be like kind of annoying. But then like, and I just didn't think I was going to have a good time and I didn't think it was worth it. But after seeing all the photos that come out, I was like, shit, I should have done that shit. (laughs) I fucking, it was worth it. It was completely worth it, you know? Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, I was, that's the other thing is I was like, man, it seems like, not the kind of people who would like dig my shit anyway so i was just like it doesn't really seem like the move for me to do but like yeah you're probably right i probably should do it um, dude i'm telling they... you because i literally everything you're saying are fears i had the first few times i played and mm. there's so many people there there is a lot of people who do not give a shit about our music but there is right. a huge amount of people who are there for their friends and then get really excited because all they hear is rhythm and then all of a sudden mr bill and dmv you are playing and they're like it's their fucking break from like quarter notes and they're like so excited about it. So it's like, yeah, the kids who were at my set, I got so many messages where people were like, that was the greatest set I heard all fucking weekend and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> it's just like, they're so, ravers are so appreciative. Like, cause they're ravers, candy, fucking binkies, a whole nine yards. Like that festival is all ravers. Wait, what is it? What is a binky? I know it's like when a rabbit oh. jumps cause it's happy, but like. Oh really? What the fuck? A binky is when a rabbit jumps. A binky is like a yeah. like a nipple, like a fucking thing's baby hat, baby's hat. Ah, uh, right, a dummy. Yeah. Oh, they're called. Du- okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this cultural divide. 
Uh, so wait, a binky is when a rabbit jumps because it's excited? Yeah, dude. If a rabbit gets stoked, they do a binky. They, well, they just like jump in the air and go like, whoa. Dude, because uh, I always call that rabbit kung fu. I don't think we have a uh, word for it in America, but I, because I, I have like the woods behind my house. Like I back up to a green belt, like park area with a river. Oh, we have a sick. bunch of rabbits. And dude, yeah, they fucking, it looks like they're spring loaded. I'm going to start yeah. calling that a binky. Thank you. I'm going to impress my neighbors. Me. I'll be like, oh, a binky. They'll be like, what? And I'll be like, I'm a cultured <laughs> fellow. Okay. Let me explain. <laughs> I found out about the word binky in America, so I think it's I think it's a global word just for people who enjoy rabbits. I I love a good rabbit. Yeah, dude, rabbits are sweet. Actually, uh, I got offered a a rabbit like a rabbit based Brunswick stew when I was in New Orleans. I went to this really nice restaurant and I didn't get it because I had a show to play, but I had rabbit once before and it was really good. I feel bad; mm-hmm. they're very sweet animals, but they are pretty fucking tasty and. I got fish yeah. instead because it's you don't want to have like I had a show in an hour and I was like, OK, if I eat a vat of rabbit stew before a show, that sounds like the beginning of something terrible. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I, I stopped eating meat uh, about six months ago because I started. Uh, well, I, I listened to an audio book called Eating Animals by John Safran. And then I watched oh, that Sea Spiracy documentary on Netflix. That'll fucking do it. And I was like, I'm done. This doesn't yeah. seem like a good. This doesn't seem like the move. It's funny. Um, my dad is like slow. I can I can see my dad becoming a vegetarian. Every time we eat steak, he's like, I can't keep doing this. And like, <laughs> you know, I, I could also see myself at some point. But like I said, me, like just not having cigarettes and shit, I, I, need, I need meat and kratom in my life right now. But, you yeah. know, I've been – there's so many extremely, extremely good like plant-based alternatives, especially now. Like I remember back in the day, it was just like tofu and tempeh and shit. But now, like, Impossible Burgers and, like, there's so many options that are good vegan options. Yeah, I did not feel like I'm, like, uh, you know, holding myself back from – Yeah. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything these days. Yeah. Like, I, I used to when I was a – I was a vegetarian when I was, like, 18 as well for, like, a long-ass time, a couple of years. Um, and at that point, I was like, oh, man, I fucking, like, always see my friends ordering, like, you know, the good shit from McDonald's and I have to, like, order some bullshit. Yeah. Um, but these days, it's like, yeah, there's so many good options. Oh, yeah. And it's crazy that even, like, a, like at fast food restaurants, they have vegan options. Like, that's that's something that makes yeah. it feel like it's a – like, that's how I know we are living in the fucking future is, like, you can buy weed at a store and get, like, plant-based protein options at fast food restaurants. Like, that's very futuristic to me. Yeah, totally. Um, all right. So I asked uh, Twitter and Discord to ask me some questions to ask you. So we have uh, some of those, too. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, uh, we have we have a question from Taboo. He said, uh, in oh, general, God. well, he, he actually said, I'm general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he, said, he can't read or write very well. He's had a tough life. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm general. How many times has he? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the question. I think it, he, he meant in general, how many times have you? But have I? That's it. Um, that's it. Just, it just stops there and has a question mark. But <laughs> but he misspelled in general, so he said, I'm general. How many times have you? Okay, let's. I'll, I'll go with 15. F- you've, you've, okay, and he's general. <laughs> just so yeah, you know. he's general. Salute to my general, <laughs> 15. That's the most taboo-ass question I've ever heard. I can hear it. I can hear it in his voice. Love that guy. <laughs> hey, have hey, you like, ever... You guys been on each other's podcast? We have, yeah. yeah. Um, and he dope. was like kind of offended because I didn't know a lot about him before he came on my podcast. <laughs> and I was Hell like, yeah. just finding out like through proxy of doing a podcast with him that he like does stand up comedy and shit like that. And I was like, the first time I met him, uh, I went to see him do stand up comedy because we got, but we had the same agent and got booked to do an entire headlining tour together. And I liked his music, but I didn't know a lot about him. And he was like, let's hang out and meet each other and. I'll go fucking do some stand up at Voodoo Comedy in Denver, and it was fucking hilarious. And yeah, that's how we met. Great. Wait, dude. so he he like also travels around to do stand up as well as traveling around he to do shows. He flew to Denver to do an open mic night, fifteen minute set. Like he's oh, committed. Dude. He is Damn. very committed. And he's yeah. like a good. He's a good stand up comic. Oh, it was good because like I was it like you know no offense, Mitch. At first I was like this is gonna be like some Larry the Cable Guy shit, and <laughs> dude I was fucking dying because. You have to realize, like, he, 
understands our world very well. He's a fucking dubstep DJ. So like right. his jokes about like kids on ketamine and like left field bass, and it was fucking hilarious. But it was also delivered in such a way where the rest of the crowd understood it and was it, he mm. killed it. Everyone was laughing so hard. Damn, that's yeah. sick. He's, yeah, he's a fun fucking dude. Stand up comedy it, it requires like a pretty serious understanding of how the human mind works i think no to... that's what i'm saying like music is easy you don't even have to make eye contact but in order to like <laughs> talk talk with no one responding for like fucking 30 minutes like that's insane yeah i mean i do that shit when i like give ableton talks but to to like just not have that computer in front of you to like, sort of like mm -hmm. dive into when you're feeling awkward or whatever oh my god yeah exactly. thing. you imagine doing stand-up holding a laptop just for the weird moments <laughs> like you, you've got headphones yeah. on and you're just like cracking jokes <laughs> you're like talking and then for a minute you just like try and look busy on the laptop <laughs> <laughs> like doing oh, this, this one? is feeling a bit awkward <laughs> yeah how do you feel about like kind of being your own cheerleader at shows oh man i fucking I don't know. Growing up in Denver, everyone was like, oh, real DJs like mix and don't have waveforms and that like fucking head ass. So I learned how to DJ like a fucking old man with like just my ears and shit. And I was always taught like, don't jump around like it's about the music, which is such <laughs> bullshit because I have so much fucking fun playing music. Like I jump around and get excited out of jubilation. And <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's just like, I love it. I love jumping around on stage and like, waving my arms and i get constantly get accused of talking on the mic too much but it's like okay like okay guys you fucking this is my dream here like i you don't really call the <laughs> shots i'm gonna say what i want and you know i don't like go on long rants on the mic i just like shouting out my friends saying telling people i miss my cat i did that at lost lands i was like <laughs> yo lost lands i fucking miss my cat and like you know stuff like that i'm just Dude, trying to i never get on the mic people. i I, I got on the mic a few times and I was just like, I can't do this. It's like I get on the mic and I just talk in my normal voice and I'm just like, hey, you, you're going to want to get up for this one. Uh, and then <laughs> yeah. people are just like, ah, does, this shit doesn't work, it's, dude. You got <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's one thing when people don't use the mic, but it's even more hilarious when someone who obviously does not want to use the mic is trying yeah, to yeah. use it. Like hearing totally. someone like timidly speak <laughs> over music is like twice as funny as someone not saying anything at all. Yeah, totally. So yeah, I, I just you stopped should... trying. I was like, this is Man, fuck this. I mean, my friend Zach Cruz, a kid, he's a rapper, so obviously talks a lot, but he uses a chaos pad and he like glitches mm. his voice out. And I always thought it'd be really cool to be like, yo, what's your bit bit doing like a fucking comb filter <laughs> your shit? And like kids yeah. on drugs love that because it's like your voice and then it like turns into psychedelic granulated fucking yeah so if i didn't enjoy talking on the mic i think i would compensate by making some insane live mic setup with like auto tune or something maybe but yeah i'm just good with drunkenly yelling good times <laughs> yeah i stopped drinking so like now i'm sober and getting on the mic is like even harder now I, playing a set sober is hard it's like yeah i i get so in my head if i fuck up in the slightest like when i'm yeah like buzzed off a few beers or whatever i'll fuck up a little bit and i'll be like that's fine no one knows that shit and i'll just like keep yeah. going but like <laughs> yeah if i'm like sober and i fuck up like even less than if i was drunk because i'm sober i'm probably playing better right um and i fuck up the tiniest bit i'll like 30 minutes later in the set still be thinking about it be like fuck yeah that time like dude I, i'll still I, I, i'll still be like recovering my confidence from like in my head thinking about it the worst experience i could possibly have is not being sober but being on only weed playing a set if i was on <laughs> weed and nothing else and had to stand in front of a group of people i would probably cancel the show i'd be like no 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 what am i supposed to do with my hands <laughs> yeah it'd be a talladega nights vibes <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man I think, yeah, the worst drug to be on for playing a show is probably weed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and I've tried to play music on acid at, like, house parties back in the day. And that's just tough with lights. And, you know, any dark room with a lot of lights on something, that gets, you know, it's a little, oh, fuck, what do I press? But yeah, psychologically, attention. it felt okay. <laughs> but, you know, I've because I, I don't really drink at home. Or even when I go out, like if I'm going to a really nice restaurant, I'll get something that like pairs with what I'm eating. But other than that, like I don't come home and drink or like, you know, if I'm not at a show, I'm not drinking. So I definitely drink at shows. But during quarantine, when I didn't have shows for a year, <laughs> I like, stopped drinking alcohol altogether. 
because I just use it as social lubricant. <laughs> yeah, totally. Did you feel a lot better? I didn't feel it? better or worse, honestly, because like mm. I enjoy drinking, but like I don't think I rely on it as a crutch. I think I do slightly when I'm performing. But, like, that run of shows I did with Yeti with 15 shows in a row, I didn't drink for every fucking show. I was like, okay, I will Mm. fucking, by the 15th show, I'll be beat. But having one show a weekend, like, I feel comfortable drinking at it. Mm -hmm. But, and also, like, Kratom makes, it it, it can make you nauseous. So, I'm like, maybe I should drink Kratom at a show. But, like, (laughs) last thing, imagine being nauseous on stage. Like, fucking, oh, God, hell no. Yeah, I've luckily never had to deal with too much, uh sickness issues on stage i know tip has played a bunch of shows with like food poisoning and shit like that that's it yeah that's brutal i've never had like i've never had to shit on stage i mean i've never been sick oh i played a show with hero bust once in san francisco at uh that 10 15 Folsom or whatever i had Mm -hmm. the flu and i was on stage in this really hot venue wearing my puffy ass winter coat like shaking but you know i still that was the only time i was like fucked up on stage and all sick but you know, knock on wood, but I seem to be okay when I'm up there. Yeah, I mean, that show in Montreal, you had to cancel, right? Because you are just too sick. Yeah, and well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can't imagine if I had tried to play that show. <laughs> you right. know, like, yeah. that was like... Because the one with Hero Bus, like, I made the call. Like, this is going to suck, but I can do it. But, like, that one in Montreal and, like, one a few weeks ago are the only shows I've canceled for health issues. Because... Like, two weeks ago, I was supposed to do Cosmic Kingdom, and I had a fucking little sore throat and nothing else. But, like, I could not get a COVID test in time, and I couldn't risk it. The worst part is I woke up the day of the show and felt fucking fine. But I didn't – I couldn't get a COVID test, so I literally had to cancel, Mm. which sucked because, like, I would have been so stoked to play that show. But – and it turns out I didn't have COVID. So, you know, (laughs) I fucking really blew that one over, but safety first, you know. Yeah, you don't want to fuck around with that shit. You don't want to be yeah. a, God, uh, a super spreader. If I poisoned Dan Green with COVID, I'd feel so bad. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Who's Dan Green? Uh, Dan Green throws Cosmic Kingdom and 515, and he, like, managed uh, Wakan. I'm sure, I is, bet you've met him. I probably, yeah, maybe. Is Cosmic Kingdom the one that happens in, like, Iowa? Yeah, with, like, the Renaissance okay. Fair thing. And I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. that's like his festival that he throws. Like he gets he gets like hired to manage a bunch of festivals. Uh, he's like mm. he's like you know the classic like sunglasses, golf cart, walkie talkie, fucking the dude. <laughs> but like yeah. at Wakan, this motherfucker is in charge of the entire festival, and I left my backpack in the green room, and he walked my backpack to me across the entire festival. Like stopped what he was doing and like brought it to me Damn. and put it on my back. And I was like, Dan, you're a fucking like hero. <laughs> Love that. Man. Yeah, I got, I got offered the uh, the Cosmic Kingdom one a while back as well. But the same deal. It's like one of those ones where I was like, this is probably going to be small and it's not enough money and it seems like going to be not the not the vibe. So I like also, I, dude, I turned down way too many shows. I should probably take more shows. Well, you know, it's funny. I need to. I'm only recently learning to turn down shows. I had this bad problem. My agents kept being like, you shouldn't take this. I'd be like, I love music. Let's take it. Like they had to like <laughs> they had to like pull the reins in a bit and be like, I know you're happy playing music, but like. There's a certain standard that kind of needs to be kept at a certain point. But so, you know, let's if we let's meet somewhere in the middle. I'll take less. You take more. Right. We'll figure that this seems out like a, that's good that you have agents like that. I feel like my whole team is like, you should do everything. And I'm like, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the opposite problem. Everything more like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, but I get opportunities, it. Opportunities. How about no <laughs> opportunities knocking? I slam the fucking door. I get it. I'm like I said, I'm a big fan of sitting and also not doing things. Like two of my favorite activities, especially sitting right. doing nothing. Top tier experience in my book. But, <laughs> you know, got to eat. I have a I have a, a a very hungry fella, you know, so. Right. Yeah. Got to buy that Chipotle somehow. <laughs> Speaking of which, Sub Doctor asks uh what your favorite type of hot dog is. Um well, that is a funny question. I actually really don't like hot dogs. I haven't eaten a hot dog in the past few years. It's cuz like I think I got a little bougie and I got into like good sausage. Like I got this like really mm. nice like locally grass-fed Italian sausage. And then I ate a hot dog and I was like this is just like unsettling. Like and that's what I'm saying. Like I'm not a vegetarian, but things like that are starting to freak me out. 
Right, hot dogs just, used like, to not freak me out. Fucking yeah. horse and it's like, whatever. What, yeah, like what part is this? Like what part of? Why is it pink? Like what the fuck? And it's not like yeah. I hate hot dogs, but it's fucking. You know, the wheels are kind of the gears are moving, and it's like I like less and less <laughs> tubed meats. You know, I don't like my meats in tube form. You know, I like disc meat. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> disc meat is where it's at. <laughs> tube yeah, meat, or like you boo. know. <laughs> yeah, or like bone meat or something, but yeah, tubes. Oh, bone I mean, meat, dude. Disc yeah. bone meat, top tier. No tubes <laughs> for this boy. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, what else have we got here? That seems like a good question to ask. Um, somebody asks if uh, you and Little Snake have kissed before. Um, you know what's funny? He literally kissed me one time. I thought like, oh. like, cause we like joke around and are fun, and this dude, <clears throat> he will like push the limit of what you think is reality and serious. You're like, wait, you're joking, right? And then he, like, digs even deeper. Like, the most meta person I've ever met. And, yeah, he just kissed me right on the <laughs> lips. I think it was on stage, if I remember. It wasn't very passionate, you know, which I would have... I was a little insulted. I would have taken, you know, a little tongue <laughs> from my boy. But, you know, he kissed me right on the lips. In fact, I think I kissed Dirt Monkey once, too. So I think mm. those are the only DJs I've kissed. Lil Snake and Dirt Monkey. Which nice. we actually all hung out in Canada together when me and Dirt Monkey were on tour, and we had a blast. Lil Snake Dude. is probably one of the funnest people to hang out with in the entire I've, world. Yeah, I've not hung out with him, but I've had him on the podcast. He seems really cool. Oh, yeah, and it's Definitely it's funny because he is, like, insane and silly, but, like, we have had some, like, some of the most, like, soul-warming heart-to-hearts, and, like, I really, really fucking love that kid, like, a lot. And by yeah, kid, I really mean child, because he's 14. <laughs> 14? No, he's, like... <laughs> He's eight, that, right? 16. <laughs> Actually, no, right. I think he just turned 21, so he's close. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to me how, like, uh, how not big he is. Well, I mean, like, he's, I don't know. He's, he seems like he's had a lot of um, integrity sticking to his guns of making just yeah. this and crazy shit. Oh, Little Snake uh, fucking sounds like Little Snake. I have never I heard know, a dude. song that's, by, like, not by him where it's like, who is this? Like, fucking no. Even by the transients, I can tell within like fifteen seconds, like like <laughs> this is one hundred percent Gino and no one else. Because I've even heard yeah. people like try and take a stab at that style, and like it's just yeah, he's yeah, it's he, kind of like sound design collage beats. It's like yeah, really yeah, it is stuff. I've yeah, I've uh, tried. Like I mean, I you know used to make more glitchy, fucked up IDME sound designy shit as well. Yeah. And I just stopped because I just like I'm not an emotionally strong enough person to <laughs> to make shit that just freaks everyone out. Dude, that's what I'm um, saying. I've literally I've so, tried it and I've done it a couple times, but like I don't have it in my heart to like I like I like playing the piano and stuff. Like it's fucking right. it's hard for me to do stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, and it's whenever I see someone who just sticks to their guns with that shit, like ankle pants is another good example, or like <sighs> um. You know, like real one. Some yeah. Anyone who's just like, fuck, I'm not gonna conform to your bullshit. I'm just gonna stick to my guns of like what I think is legitimately fucking awesome. Those and are just... the artists I look up to the most. Like completely. Yeah, like, man. It's not even Same. even if I don't like their music. Like someone who is true to themselves to that extent. That's like what. And that's what I look up to. Like you could never tell him this, but like I look up to Little Snake so much. I can never tell him that. But <laughs> man, like that's like what I want to be like when I'm older even though i'm six years older than him <laughs> you know yeah dude um <clears throat> all right let's do one more from twitter uh ahi asks um Ooh. ask about his beautiful melodic releases on dome of doom versus dubstep releases and being an artist that can make multiple flavors oh i love ahi first of all very smart yeah, dude, very smart guy um he's taught me a lot about serum and I actually just saw oh, him twice did, yeah. this weekend. We played the Dome of Doom tenure together, and then the next day oh, played nice. Boss Lands. So I got a nice, healthy Whoa. dose of Chris. Damn and, sick. Yeah, he's, he's a great dude. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. My favorite my favorite releases I've ever put out are my Dome of Doom releases because those are those are like my soul. Like I love making bangers and like lit shit, but like like those are like those albums are like me processing my fucking life and my relationships and like trauma and my joy. Like that is, that is art. That is like art in its purest form. And like a lot of dubstep and shit, I, it's, it's art, but I write for it to be fun and like for shows, like but like functional music kind of. Yeah. Yeah. These albums were literally for myself and no one else. Like if I wrote them and they got zero listeners, it would be totally okay. Cause like, that's something I had to do. And I'm just really lucky that people enjoy them, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. I, I kind of every few years will be like, fuck dubstep. And I'll like make yeah. a bunch of like oh, dude, an yeah. IDM album or something like that. And it's crazy because every time it happens, I'm like, I'll never write dubstep again. Not like like out of like spite, <laughs> but I'm like, I forgot how to write dubstep. And I do a bunch of sad <laughs> piano songs. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, like square waves and then dubstep all over. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to balance it, right? Because like. I feel like to some degree when you start doing all these different genres and stuff, maybe this has not happened so much for you because Blocked kind of overshadows so much of, of the stuff that you do. So people look at you and they're like, oh, Blocked guy or something. Yeah. But like, yeah. um, I feel like for me, I've never had like any particular one track get like massive or anything. So like, I think it just gets, sometimes it can get uh, confusing for people to like look at an artist and be oh. like, well, there's like too much there to like deal with. I don't know like what to expect. And therefore, like, because I don't know what to expect, it's too much to like understand this project and a couple things that have happened to me. I've had people hit me up and tell me they will no longer listen to me. I've had oh, kids wow. on SoundCloud be like, you've changed, bro. Like, I'm going to follow <laughs> you. I've also had people say, oh, that Crazy. must be a different DMVU. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, no, wow. there's only one of one of us, and it's me. <laughs> and, yeah, I've also had kids, like, like even at Infrasound, like, someone's like, I can't wait to hear the tracks off your new album. And I'm like, I'm not playing that shit at Infrasound. Like, <laughs> it's p people's expectations are really and it is looking back on it like maybe that's not what i should have done but trying to be like little snake here and stay true to myself so like <laughs> i'm gonna make down tempo chill shit even if it tends to come back and bite me in the ass because it's it's not a matter of i want to it's a matter of i have to it is my fucking duty as an artist to do that mm. or else i'd be a fucking phony so <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah, I feel similarly. All right, man. Well, um, yo, I've I like you. I'm also a three beverage man, and they're all out. So, yo, here, let's cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers, cheers, man. Clank, <laughs> thirsty fellas. Yeah, yeah. I'm also doing. Uh, I'm doing coffee, regular water, and a sparkling water. Oh, see, that's I actually that was my fourth beverage that didn't make the cut because I ah. left the lid. I left the lid off it, so now it's magically yeah. turned into water. Just the best water. part about sparkling <laughs> the best part about sparkling water is that you can alchemy that into regular water. <laughs> it's like that Mitch Hedberg joke. He's like, uh, es you know, when the escalator breaks, it just turns into stairs. It's, He's like, sorry so, for the convenience. <laughs> I fucking brought up Mitch Hedberg last night at Chipotle, and I was like, <laughs> he's like, baked potatoes are good because like, if you're not hungry, you can turn the oven on, and then like maybe later, who knows, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Mitch Hedberg so much. Dude, he's so good. All right, Dogs man. Well, yeah. are always in the push-up position. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I had to get one more out. You're good. You're good. Well, yeah, man. I'll I'll uh, let you get about your day. But um, thanks so much for doing this, dude. Dude, yeah. Thank you for having me. This is a blast. I'm glad we finally got to like you know shoot the shit. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. Likewise. It was, yeah, we should write I, some music and stuff at some point. You, let fucking let's do it. I'm down. Let's write something sad. I need a break from bangers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do, do sad boy music for sure. Hell yeah. All right, well, dude, yeah, thank you so much, and you have a good day. Say hello to your cat for me. I will, yeah. She's asleep right now when she wakes up. <laughs> My cat is too. Lazy bastard. Hey, thanks for listening to the Mr. Bill podcast. These episodes are edited and uploaded by Robert Fumo. You can also support the show, get early access to episodes, and hear bonus content by going to patreon.com forward slash Mr. Bill's Tunes and becoming a patron. Uh, please rate and review on iTunes unless you're going to be a little shit about it. And all the links to my various platforms are at mrbillstunes.com. Thank you. I know what I'm doing.